All right, so in the last video, we talked about the elimination method for solving systems. In this video, we're gonna talk about an alternative method. And by the end of the unit, you'll be able to just do whichever one you prefer. It's nice to know both because some uh, problems kind of set up to do one easier than the other. All right, so it's helpful to know both, but really you can kind of specialize in one. So this is the substitution method. All right, so substitution is a non-math word. Right? You know what a, a substitute teacher is. It's just when one thing is replacing another. All right, and we can use this at our advantage to get rid of variables and in equations. Just like the elimination method, our goal is to get rid of one of the, the variables, but it's not really the first thing we do. So that's why it has a different name and a slightly different uh, tactic that we're going for. All right, so let's solve this system. First of all, the elimination method, the way we did it in the last video is not gonna work because I'd get three X plus two Y equals two X minus three. And that doesn't get rid of an extra variable. All right. But for the substitution method, what we're gonna end up doing is we have Y equals in this second equation. So we can take y equals, and if y is equal to something, we can use it up there. So our top equation now is gonna be 3x. Instead of y, we know y is equal to 2x minus four. And by substituting this y equals part in for this y, you can see the equation down here only has x's and no y's. And that's a good thing, because if it only has x's, we can figure out what the answer for x is. So I'm gonna combine the like terms add four and divide by five. Then I get x equals one. And then just like with the elimination method, now we know half the answer, x is one. So we could plug this into either of the equations at the top. But in this case, it actually, they're both right, but the one's gonna be much less work. And the fact that this one already has y equals, so it's gonna be, less steps of solving if we just plug it into this bottom equation, y equals x is one. Because all we have to do now is subtract and get that y had to be negative two. So our answer is one, negative two. Again, it's always a good idea to check to make sure your answer makes sense. If I plug it into the top equation, I get three minus two is one, which is true. All right, so this is my final answer. All right, so the substitution method, we're gonna take one of the variables is gonna be equal to something. We plug that into the other equation and that'll give us an equation that does not have that variable anymore. We can solve that, plug it into the original substitution equation we had and get the other half of our answer. All right, so this is the general rule for the substitution method. All right, so here's your turn. Really similar to the last one. The important thing to notice is we have y equals there. I use that to your advantage to solve this system. And here's the solution I did. So again, we're doing the substitution method. So we're gonna take this y equals part. If y is equal to two x minus six, we're gonna put the two x minus six there. We combine the like terms and solve our equation. We get half of our answer, y is five halves. Kind of unlucky for it to be a fraction, but luckily when we plug this in to our y equals equation, the twos cancel out, we get something that doesn't have fractions and it's straightforward to solve from there. Again, good idea, and I did it right before I wrote the solution. All right, plug that number in there, make sure the equation makes sense so you know that that's actually a solution to your system. All right, one thing you have to be very careful with when you're perform performing substitution is the distributive property. So that's the thing that looks like this, right, with kind of the really mathy stuff. Whenever you have this multiplication in front of parentheses, this A distributes in, you multiply everything by A. All right, so typically with numbers, maybe it looks something like this. Right. And you get two X plus six, the two times the X is two X, two times three is six. So make sure if you have a number in front of parentheses that you distribute it in. All right, another good rule of thumb is when you're doing substitution, use parentheses. I just said, see what I mean by that. So again, substitution method, clear giveaway. We have y equals, we can take this y and plug it in just for that y there. So our equation is gonna look like this. We still have the two x, we still have this minus three. And now this y is getting replaced with the whole thing, four x minus three. So this is what I mean by putting it in parentheses. I'm plugging in four x minus three in for this y. So it's useful to put it in parentheses. 
because now this is my giveaway that this minus three distributes in to that parentheses. Negative three times four is negative 12. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. All right, then I can combine like terms and then solve my equation. So especially when you are doing Uh, this substitution method, really be careful with the distributive property. This number in front of the things you're substituting in affects the entire thing that you plugged in. So let's just finish this. Oops. There we go. Right. And that means that x is going to be negative 8 over negative 10, which is going to be the negatives cancel and becomes 4 over 5. And then we can plug that into our other equation. Now we know x has to be 4 over 5. 16 over 5 minus 3. And this one's not going to come out as nice. We have to get a common denominator. So 3, if I multiply that by 5, it's going to be 15 over 5. And that's going to be 1 fifth. So my final answer should be 4 fifths. Eight fifths minus three fifths is five. Fifths. Yeah, so if you plug that into the other equation, it actually works. So this is the answer, even though it doesn't come out nice with fractions. All right, it's still the answer for this system of equations. All right, so the main thing for this example is just when you have these numbers in front of the thing you're substituting for, remember to distribute it. And I like drawing these little errors to remind myself that this negative three is going into both parts of that parentheses. All right, so in this one, it might not be obvious you have to do a distributive property, but negative signs like this are kind of a hint that you're gonna have to do something with that negative. All right, so try to solve this one on your own and just be careful with that negative sign. And here's the answer I came up with. So there's negative sign, which that negative sign is this one in red there. It has to distribute in to that negative two x plus three because this is getting substituted in. So the negatives there cancel, give me plus two X. The negative here and that three, give me that minus three. And those all give me X equals one when I solve that equation after I distribute correctly. Also gets Y equals one. So my final answer is here, one, one. Right. So again, just whenever there's anything other than just a single plus sign in front of something that you're substituting, uh, you have to remember to distribute that information into the entire parentheses. Uh, there's none in this video. I might have done that on accident, but sometimes you also have x equals here. It's the same process. You just plug the x in there instead of for the y there. Uh, but all the ones in the video happen to be the y equal parts that we have. All right, so your multiple choice question, what is the solution to this system? All right, solve it using the substitution method.